Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Okay, we'll call this uh, June 12th, 2024 budget work session of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners to order. Um, invocation and pledge is mine this month, so if you'll join me in prayer. Father God, we have so many deliberations to make, so many issues that we're trying to deal with for the citizens of Alamance County, and we ask that you be in each one of our hearts and each one of our minds to lead, guide, and direct our thoughts and our deeds, our actions and our words, dear Lord, that they'll be acceptable in your sight and that they'll take us where we need to be to get our county straight and run the finances properly for the people of Alamance County. We ask you to bless us, keep us safe and sound, keep the county safe and sound, protect our law enforcement, protect our EMTs, protect all of our employees, dear Lord. We ask all this in the powerful and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. County Manager York. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Happy to kick off our third budget work session today. Um, the agenda just has us moving right into adjustments and proposals from the board. We will try to reflect those uh, on the screen as we go with a running tally for each adjustment. Um, aside from that, if there are other questions or information that we can provide to you, we'd be happy to do that. We're ready to jump in when you are. I'll take a moment just to acknowledge the fact that our chairman is out today. He's a little under the weather, and we we'll hope to have him back um, soon. Expect him to be okay. He, he thinks he'll be able in a couple of day, a day or a day or two at most. So, I acknowledge his absence. Okay, uh, Manager York. You want to proceed? All right. I think Rebecca uh, Crawford is going to start us off, um, reminding us what adjustments we have made so far, and then happy to turn it over to the board. Rebecca, do you want to walk us through that sure. again? Yep. So uh, as we discussed on Monday, we have a few staff recommendations that we have already adjusted and propose as adjustments to the manager's recommended budget. One is on the revenue and expenditure side to increase by 200,000. Uh, and that is for fines and forfeiture funding that by state statute goes directly to ABSS. Uh, the next would be a grant that the library received as of June 6th, which would also add revenue and expenditure budget of 27,200. And then on the expenditure side only uh, with a net zero change, we removed 325,000 from the ABSS capital funding for the bleacher repairs after a decision that was made at a previous meeting. Um, and then a staff also identified that there's an economic development grant that is expiring. And so we are able to add 30,000 back into our expenditure budget. Are there any adjustments that you'd like to make? We recommend we use our session today as that time to throw out ideas, have discussion, um, share information, and that will help us get towards our adoption on the 17th, uh, hopefully with some consensus. I'll ask the 200,000 about forms and fines and forfeitures, um, what is that 200,000 gonna be taken from? Because I know we get that with the court, so all that stuff. Is something somebody else not going to get that two hundred? No, this is new money. We we've noticed as we were closing out the current fiscal year that each fiscal year we tend to come back to the board with an amendment at the end of the fiscal okay. year to add that money. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it now. We can see that that trend is occurring, and we know that this is only to be able to be used for the schools. So crown pays. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least we're benefiting it, being yeah. able to put it towards education. Yeah, yeah. And that change is plus 30,000? 30,000 surplus? Okay, any other comments? Utilities it. I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. No, Pam, did we finish? No, no, no. Well, I just I wanted to go back to utilities. Okay. Where um, they were looking at a little over $3 million, possibly, because we got all those numbers. Thank mm-hmm. God that's not my gas in Waterville. Um, and we had suggested it go down to, what, 1, 2, 1.2, 1. 1. 1.5, or something like that. Uh, what I want to know is when we, with the pro, you know projections of Duke Power's going to raise everything, we're seeing this across, I saw this morning, where inflation has gone up another 3.3%. And I'm just curious if we set that goal at that one point something million where they were looking at over three, when it comes and runs out, if it should, where is that extra money coming? Is that going to come to come out of our fund balance, our general fund, to cover that, if that should go over that, if Mr. Hook has to come back in here? It would come out of fund balance. Mm-hmm. That's a magical box of money, isn't it? Okay. So we want to leave that like that is. And then if they have to come back in here, we have to adjust it. In the manager's proposed budget, we don't have an increase at all. Okay. So I think there was a proposal made at the last meeting to put aside some money for utilities, which would be an increase. Do you have that amount, Rebecca, from last meeting? We can certainly pull it up. I think that was Commissioner Turner's suggestion. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine, but I'm just curious as to when that happens, and it's more than that, where are we going to get this money from if we're trying to do a budget as tight as possible and fair to everybody as possible? So I believe there were a couple different proposals. Um, the latest one I saw was for $1.2 million, which would be a, a utilities contingency of 20%. Okay. I'm not sure if that's what was if that's made in the, the in meeting, during the meeting. I think what we talked about was removing the contingencies and going with the flat amount. And if you'll give me a second, I'll try to find mm-hmm. that amount. So that was two point five million, two million five hundred and fifty three thousand. Okay, Pam. Are Is that what you were th- remembering, Heidi? I think that's okay. what we were saying. But Commissioner Turner, did you have a different number? In I think it was two point five five nine six. Okay. Something. That's what we have. If that's an addition. That would be an addition okay. to the uh, recommended budget. Mm-hmm. Right. There's no utility increase in there at the moment. That's correct. Okay, and and just one more thing about the the maintenance uh, maintenance. The HVACs and all that, I was so glad to hear uh, Mr. Hook talk about a real maintenance program because, I mean, we've heard everybody always runs to maintenance and wants to pick on it. Um, and we're absolutely positive we don't want to do the amount that they had suggested and drop that down because I think that's, what, 500, 550 uh, to really cover, really overview of the whole school system, their HVACs, their roofs, their... Um, I mean, because they're going to be running everything full time now, and and things even running full time if they're new. Can I mean I have to get well? I have to get our you know our furnace serviced, or we're going to have problems with it. And that's always been the sore spot of ABSS to the commissioners. That's you know just over the years was the maintenance. And I just want to make sure that it is covered and supervised and checked on so that we don't have another crisis like we've had or we're not looking at water running through. I mean, it's just treat the school system's buildings like we would treat our own home because it has our children in it. And so I just want to make sure that we're not running a sale here and we just, we're not going, I know we got to look at getting squeaky clean with everything and and we are going to, but I just really want to make sure that we really focus on maintenance because like I said, that has been a sore spot for a long time. And I'm just glad to hear that they're coming forward with that. That's accountability, big time. I believe the original request for preventative maintenance was seven hundred thousand. Okay. okay. But yesterday we heard five hundred or five fifty. They're right here in a question. 
four hundred and ninety-five thousand was the one for Ruben HVAC at a, a lower amount. Okay. Okay. But they like utilities. We got them if we have to. Would you like to propose that as no, an I'm adjustment? No, I'm not proposing nothing. I'm just asking questions. Okay. I, I listen to Craig. I've been on the second every motion that's probably come out of his mouth, and I believe in that. But this is a real stickler for me. I don't want to cut this short because it has gotten, it's just, it's gotten us on the media. We're famous, and I don't want to be famous for those reasons. I don't want to see mold in this county ever again except my bathroom. So that's all I'm saying. If, if I might, Commissioner Thompson, I understand that change to be um, that the roof plan doesn't change, but the HVAC plan uh, creates preventative maintenance yearly for each of the schools as opposed to quarterly. Is that essentially the difference? It reduces some of the quarterly activity. Every piece of equipment will be touched, touched at least yearly. Um, I think that's it's a good start. What I had said, we're going from zero to four hundred ninety-five thousand. That's and one other question: Are these your people? No, you don't sort it. Are these your people, or are these people that we're going to we're going to hire to do this? That are HVAC professionals. That are this is what they do for a living. Con contracted services from a company that has uh, folks that are certified on the types of equipment we have. Okay. Just trying to make sure they're covered. No more running out of sleep. I'm good. Would you like to put any of those adjustments up there? I didn't say nothing about adjustments. I just wanted to know yes or no. I mean, I just really want to make sure that they are covered. Because um, right, like without... using cheap paint. Don't use cheap paint. Right. Use good paint so you don't have to go back and patch it all the time. Without adding any of those in, those are not included in the recommended budget. So I would What's need... Not? The preventative maintenance contracts and the increase of utilities, those would need to be added up there as an agenda adjustment. I just want to be clear. It's in Greg's request, but it is not in the recommended so, budget. Uh, why do we talk about it if we're not going to do it? That's, that's what we're doing. You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, all that's, of a sudden we got that. That's that, what we're doing through the right, I get So the that. recommended so budget came your, out before I'll we it, had this. It, Stick it up there yeah. and let's see what it looks okay, like. Okay, thank you. Put that up there. Okay. See what the numbers look like. So I think I'm hearing interest in adding 2,553,000 for utilities, for utilities. and 495,000 for preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to get out of control here. Now. I just. I'm all about the maintenance because I was told Monday if they go above their limit with electricity, they can come back in here and we got this fund balance that we can help them with. And it's just very simple for me. It's not for anybody else because I'm not, it's, we're just all so different. I just want to make sure they're covered if they have to be covered in a crisis situation like all the other agencies in the county. We're looking at that across the board. We're in that position. Okay. With the addition of those two things, that would cover them. But you have to add that. Remember when I presented the budget, I, I said remember. anything I more <laughs> needs to come from more revenue outside of this. I'm all about that, that maintenance. Are those numbers reflective of your thoughts, Commissioner? No. No. <laughs> Um, I just want to make sure that maintenance is covered. This is a first time thing, and this has been the hot topic for our school system for years. And they need to run like a, a business when it comes to stuff like that. Like the county, we always have our stuff checked on. I agree, we just need to be cognizant of the fact that everything we add I know. is going to impact the tax rate. I know, so, I know. So we can't overlook that fact. We're going to but everything that we don't do affects everything. You know? That's right. right. So if you're thinking about adding something, just remember you're adding to the tax. I was just asking. Rate. Unless we find a place someplace else we can take it out. I don't think so. And I, to be perfectly honest, I don't see many places in this budget to do much, if any, cutting. There's some, but not much. And I think we've addressed most of what we think we can cut already. So. 
Mr. Lashley? Yes. Um, since we're uh, talking about things you would like to put in your budget, um, give me one second here. I think I want to uh, look at the Sheriff's Department. Okay. Um, I think there was something sent over by um, Mr. Fortner about uh, taking care of his new hires, so to speak. Yes, sir. Can I get you to talk about that a little bit? And yes, sir. I think we know what the what the number is. I have uh, extra things for you. This one of you. You already what you already have been sent. The only thing was added is how we're going to get this done. Mm -hmm. Does this have a oh, it does, okay. It has everything I can Good evening, commissioners and staff. Uh, Sheriff Johnson and I've been on the phone with him more than he's been on vacation this week. So he sends his apologies that he can't be here to address you with whatever questions that you have. Uh, Mr. Lashley, yes, sir. go ahead, sir. What do you want me to do? I just wanted to, sh just to make a, a short presentation of what, what you're asking for and what this document that you gave us, what exactly it, it all entails. Okay. This entails the shortages that we have at the Sheriff's Office, including the sworn and detention and our civilians. Uh, when I sent it over, we made a proposal to do a $10,000 sign-on bonus for 12-hour uh, employee positions only, 5000 at the initial date of hire. That's the initial date that the sheriff swears you in. Then after 12 months, if you satisfactorily uh, make your evaluations, you do all your service training, there's no disciplinary action, and you complete the probationary period, the other $5,000 will be handed to you. Uh, we would also, once we get to 80% uh, staffed, then this goes away until, if for whatever reason, COVID, whatever, whatever other, as Ms. Thompson talked about, tragedy was to happen, we could start back at commissioner's uh, privileges and, and honors. The things that we talk about, yes, go ahead. Give me a second. I, I, I think we have assumed, too, that 80% of the staff is 80% of the 70 vacancies we cover, assumed to be 71 yes, vacancies. Yes, that, that uh, Ms. Heidi sent to us by email. Thank you very much, Ms. Heidi. She already crunched the numbers. Thank you very much. And Rebecca, to thank you. And the staff, thank you so much for that. Uh, I did add in red on the where we talked about uh, the other counties around us. We checked, they check, e they check the websites every day. The ones in red, which is Wake County and Department of Corrections, they raised theirs this morning. Uh, it's on their website. They raised their sign-on bonuses this morning. But implement, implements, how are we going to do this? That's the most important thing, is we're going to target the recruitments by being on-site and on-site and off-site at job fairs. Uh, developing recruitment background team to uh, increase the application services within our own department, train them, get them up to speed on what they need to be looking for so they can go out and do backgrounds, they can go out and do proper interviews, and there's training for that. Uh, also, in the orientation of the new hires, express things uh, internally and more talking to them about things that go on there. Leadership training and field training, I done talked about that. Uh, employee uh, satisfactional ideas throughout the next physical year, evaluate these. Also uh, evaluate our hiring process to share with other county departments, working with our other county departments here in Alamance County, seeing what their ideas are, talking to them, see how we need to do things better and to continue working with the uh, management and human resources uh, provided information and insight in the upcoming market study. Working together as a team. I'm just 
the person that's given this to you today. My team is sitting right there. After you talked to us Monday, we went back, and we sat in a room for four hours, guys and girls. We let them hash it out, and all I said was get out of the weeds and let's put it to common sense and how we can help our agency as well as other agencies. They came up with this plan. All the honor and the glory, as is, is my, myself and the sheriff say, it goes to them because they worked hard to be able to do this where it would not have the commissioners have to raise taxes, have to do other stuff. We take our own stuff and do it. So we appreciate the time and effort that you allow us to come up here and talk to you uh, about this. I think it's a great plan. I think it's, a, it's ideal. It, it don't hurt nobody. It don't cost nothing. We'll tweak our system, and we'll work with other county uh, departments to help and assist them and get ideas from them also. So I hope that answered your question, Mr. Lashley. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know if the other commissioners had some questions. I just have one comment. Mr. Turner? Questions? Uh, I'm happy to defer to Mr. Lassie for the moment. Okay, great. Uh, I thank you, Commissioner Turner. I appreciate that. Uh, the only thing I really wanted to ask uh, is if we allocate this money to you and you don't use it, can you not say, I'm not saying give it back, but can you at least uh, have it appropriated for this and only this? Mm -hmm. And put it in a dedicated line item. Like a separate line for sign-on bonus. We because I'm just that. looking, you know, 54 hires. I mean, Jackie, how many how many hi people have you hired this year already? I mean, because I know your particular department has uh, always been understaffed and having difficulty recruiting people, too. So we have to go by a lot with sheriff standards, and we have a lot of laws that we have to have that, that corporate world does not have to have. Absolutely. Okay, so you can't have in sheriff standards, you can't have talking about certain misdemeanors on your record that's still on there. You can't have those things. Uh, we have to look at integrity. They have set us on the pedestal, as citizens do of law enforcement. They put you on a higher pedestal than anywhere else. So you're always in the spotlight. They always talk about the bad. They don't ever want to talk about the good, okay? Good only lasts for a few seconds. So what we have to do is be beyond reproach, and that's what we have to do. The sheriff's standards are set high. He looks at the narcotics use. We, he, he does not, uh-uh. You, you've been using drugs, and, and, and we had one that come in, and, and, and Ms. Mantrice asked the question. Uh, you say you've used drugs. Well, when, when did you? This is what it came out to be. Well, what's today? She said, you know, it's like Wednesday. He said, oh, well, last Tuesday. Well, you wash that one away real quick. So another thing, in the past week or so, we had eight uh, that they went through the eight. Well, automatically, the first four got washed out because of drug use. Or we also have to look at uh, civil stuff like uh, what is your finances? How, how do you keep your finances? Sheriff, Sheriff Standards looks at that. They don't want nobody out there that's got... You know, people suing them all the time for money, and they, they can't handle their finances. So those four washed out. So we have four that we kind of stuck with, but out of that four, due to the, the rigorous hiring process which we have, which is the background interviews, uh, we'll go out and talk to the public. We talk to where they worked last, all those good things. Then they have the polygraph that they have to take. Then they have to have FMRT or the psychological and out of the four, break it down, we'll be lucky if we get two, possibly three, out of the four. And we look more at, we'll get the two that, that are actually hiring. And then we hire them on, we take them on, and then you've got the year to get them certified in, in what, which either detention or uh, basic law enforcement. And then there again, whether they wash out of that or not whether they fail those subjects. So you're looking, and, and you already see the numbers. You know, we're thinking, talking, that within probably the next year and a half, 
maybe. We'll be up to 80% staff looking at good employees. We want people that we can retain and stay with us and work for the county. We're not looking for the person that's just chasing the shiny red apple that's out there. We're looking for that dedicated employee that wants to do the job. And we want to train our own people to be able to go out and talk to a friend or be wherever they're at and talk to them, hey, we got an opening, won't you come down here and be able to talk a little bit about it also. That's what we want to do. We want to do the recruiting program as a professional recruiting program that other people might use that model. Well, the reason I'm asking that question is trying to figure out what the probability, not the possibility, but what's the probability of hiring 49 people this year. Uh, this year, being that we're in the middle of it, sir, hopefully we might get 10. Okay. So possibility we'll have 10 by the end of the year. May have more than that. Well, I'm just, just asking because, you know, uh, if, if it's 10, why couldn't uh, allocate 25% of this number? Go ahead and allocate that 25% now so you've got 10, pe 10 people in the, in the bag. And it, like I've told the sheriff countless times, if you get on a hiring spree, please come back. Yes. Please come back because we will allocate the money to you. Yes. If I'm not here, I think these folks will do it. Uh, so could we do that, Rebecca? We can certainly pull that number. And I don't know if Mr. Turner has some questions. Well, just a clarification on that. Are you talking, Mr. Former, are you talking 10 between now and December, or are you talking 10 for the whole fiscal year? Hopefully, if we get lucky with these four, that'll be four we've already got in the hopper. So if everything goes good, hopefully maybe – Maybe eight to ten. It's it's hard to say, Mr. Turner. It fiscal really is. Year or fiscal year or calendar year, I think, is the question. You said between now and the end of the year. I well, think I, I'm thinking, I, okay, fiscal year from July to July of next year. Okay, so I'll clarify that. Possibly we could get ten, maybe more, depending on our how we hit a spree and, and what good people we get coming in. Uh, and there again, it's, it's the economy. We got... Uh, all bad things coming up this year, as we know, we got elections, we got all the other these other things coming up. So, yes, I would say an estimate if we could get ten between now and next physical year, we might look, get lucky and get more. And if so, I know the sheriff will come back and let you know that. And that's the reason we want to work closely with county management to let them know, hey, we're doing this, we're doing better, we're doing this. Not come in and talk. Communications is what doesn't happen anymore. We need to come and talk and sit down and discuss instead of texting and things of that nature. And that's what we're coming up with, is we want to be able to sit down and talk face to face and see where the problems is and what we need to do better. We're not perfect by no means, sir, but we want to try to be. We want to strive to make Alamance County the best is, Ms. Thompson, what did you just say a minute ago? You want to be on the news for good things, not always bad. Amen. And that's what we want to do. That's what they sat down for four and a half hours and came up with before you got the emails. Excellent. So, Rebecca, can you give me a, a figure on the 10 that we're speaking of? Go ahead. And oh, I'm sorry. Let me get out of the way. We can share. Oh, thank you very much. You go ahead. <laughs> what do you think? So if we did 25% of that total amount, this is not the 80% of vacant positions, but all the positions, it would be 106,443. Okay. Let's stick that on the list. Okay. 106. 106. 443. 443. Mr. Turner, anything else? I got, I got one more question, but it's for the school system. Oh. Thank you. Well, I got a, I got a couple of thoughts about this. I've thought about it a lot since Jackie and I first talked about it, and we've had some more conversations about it as well. I, honestly, looking at this thing, I don't think it's going to have a net a net impact on our budget. Not really. I know we look at it and we think it will, but we got seventy positions we're funding, mm -hmm. which we're not going to have filled. So we've got to find we've got the money going into the budget for seventy positions. Correct. These seventy aren't filled right now. If we get 10, 
There's going to be lap salaries that result from that. So we won't have to budget anything for this money. In addition, if we get the, start to fill these positions, we're going to see some re, some savings from the over three hundred thousand dollars we've had That's correct, in overtime. Sir. That is very correct. So I, I see the potential here to get the, to use this to get it done, and it may may prove to be a a, a banner program for us to use with some other difficult to fill positions. Try and come up with a way to fill some slots in DSS and EMS if it works. As uh, as as uh, the chief's just indicated, if, you know he's going to be he's going to be okay with 10. I mean, I'd like to see 56 on yep. on the 1st of July, personally. I'd like I would to, love to, that too. That would be a miracle <laughs> in my mind. That would be an absolute <laughs> miracle. I'd love to see it, but I don't see this having an impact on our budget. I agree. Ms. Thompson? I want to ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, we get random exit interviews that we get yes, email from us. Yes, ma'am. And then um, I hear from folks who have left. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure they contact any of us. And um, my concern is, is um, <clears throat> the salary is one thing. Everybody needs to get a job. They can make a living to pay their bills and enjoy their life. Um, the detention is a whole different ballgame. Yes, ma'am. Because um, I want us to be careful when we're up here talking about, you know, my detention <clears throat> officers have been beat up. I'm probably going to get killed. You know, this is it's because it's reality, but at the same time, that can really impress someone. What the heck? You know, am I really cut out to do something like that? I'm certainly not. And um, I just, I look at um, Wake County's budget is $2.08 billion, and they have a 7500 sign-on bonus. For site, this $581 million. They have a 5,000. Forsyth's had a hot mess with their jail. I mean, they've had yes, some really difficult times. I've watched their sheriff online. Durham's is 966 million, and um, and it's you know got a $10,000 sign-on bonus, and they also put 230 million into their schools and decreased it this year 20.6 million. And we're we're not that big, but our problems are big, just yes, like everybody else. You just kind of do the ratios and see how it goes. Um, when I was on the DSS board, I would hear from disgruntled social workers when they left. That's another hard job. It's, yes, it's ma'am. Oh, like a teacher. It's a calling, and you know what you're walking into. Moving counties, you're still working with that same kind of clientele. It's just a different zip code. It's, are you cut out for it or not? And um, I, I just want to make sure I used to be concerned about the how toxic the atmosphere is when you go to do that call because it is very dangerous, very serious. I've seen that Wednesday night of last week. But it can't come back to your office, your home base, and be toxic. And when you work with really hard stuff, it can be a really tough atmosphere to stay positive. Because I can't imagine walking around in jail and always looking over not just one shoulder but the other <laughs> because everybody in there is ticked. They don't want to be there, and some even say they don't deserve to be there. No, not buying it. But to work in that thing, in that atmosphere, it is very dangerous. And I want any officer that wears the badge to be safe. And But they also know that it's not always guaranteed, like a soldier, like anybody that does this kind of work. And so I just want to make sure... I mean, I understand all this. I mean, because you have to have incentives. We give them all the time for big industry. We have the supplement for teachers that and people that have bigger jobs or whatever, whatever it is. What are you going to give me? Life insurance, all kinds of stuff like this. That is a good reason. It's really part of your salary. And it's a good reason for you to go work somewhere. The benefits that you're going to get. Does it really pay me to work there? Is it worth all the stuff I have to endure? And, um, and you, your individual has to answer that question themselves. But... Um, I just, I just want to make sure that we are looking at the real core issue as to why so much of an exodus out of detention. Because not everybody's cut out for that job. It is a rare person that can do that, and they are amazing. And, um, and that's all I'm saying because um, you'll never make what you deserve in first responders. There ain't enough money in the world to pay you guys. There just isn't. If I had a lamp, I'd rub it, and he'd give y'all what you needed. But I'm just saying, I just in anything we do, 
there is there is an issue that we have to really face to make sure that we are dealing with that. It's kind of like pulling a weed, mowing it, or rounding it. You got to get rid of that problem. And so that's that's all I'm saying because I mean these budgets in adjacent counties they're big. They got bigger numbers. They got they got a great wolf lodge. You got a crab deer valley mall. They got all the stuff that pours into their tax base. You know. Um, I hope we can look at becoming that also ourselves when it comes to that commercial aspect to take the burden off all of us. So that's it because um, I'm your biggest fan. You know that I bake for y'all. Yes, and, um, and, and I'm just saying, I just want to make sure that we're totally honest with ourselves and if, if there's anything that we can fix to make us better plus money, I think that's just a bonus. That's a real bonus because you go home. I've called you when I was in Kentucky about somebody. Yes, ma'am. You picked up the phone and now you, you get to deal with it. But I'm just saying, you never stop. No, ma'am. You never stop. It's 24-7. You never run the other way. And, um, and I'm always stand by you. But um, I just want to be really honest with ourselves. We just have to make sure that we are dealing with the whole Go up in 30,000, look at it, and make sure we're not missing anything because I want your staff full and safe and everybody ready to go. Yes, ma'am, and that's the reason why if we can get people in, we can relieve people to go home and not have to be come back on, uh, call in on overtime or have mandatory overtime. We want to be able to get our staff up to where they can have their two or their three days off yeah. and they can they can de decompress mm -hmm. and... Uh, that's that's what they looked at was what can we do for the individual to make it better if we can get to 80 percent that would make us wonderful make us healthy yeah in other words we got to go to the doctor which you all are the doctors and we go with what you say and we work and we make it and we make ourselves better and that's what we want to do it's not looking at me it's looking at us and the communication part is very important. Well, and I caregivers, first responders, are the people who take probably the least amount of care of themselves yes, because they are selfless. And I know one thing my son told me after he went through basic training, he said, I learned how to sleep standing up. And I bet Turner over there, Commissioner Thompson over there, can say <laughs> that. And, uh, but, I mean, it's just it's, it's a rare person that wears that badge. I don't care if you're male or female Martian. You are the elite and I want you safe but I want you healthy well George Strait has a famous song it's called the weight of the badge That's it. if you listen to the words it is very true mm -hmm. you don't know when you leave that morning when you yeah. kiss your wife and children to buy if you're going to be come home and hug them it's it's a weight of the badge but it's like the weight of the badge for teachers yeah. for social service for EMS there there's a weight of the badge there also just in different circumstances. And we thank you for entertaining this thought. We thank you for looking at it and really looking at it uh, for my emails and things. And we very much appreciate it. The sheriff is very much appreciative of it. I just got off the phone with him before I came over here. He told me exactly what to say and what to do. And I said, well, I appreciate that. I'll have to wing it with a wing and a prayer. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you all and we appreciate it again. He did almost a good job of saying it exactly like he would have said it probably to the chief, i tell you. Well, I didn't raise my finger or anything That's like correct. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got one last question. I just want to ask Jackie since well, he's there. Let me finish up on my oh, I'm sorry. Go <coughs> you okay, please? Thank you. Um, like I said, I, I don't really see this having much of an impact, if any, on the budget. Is there a way when we, as, as Commissioner Lashley indicated, that we not only can set aside, but, for example, like I said, there, in, unless we fund, unless we hired existing certified officers from other agencies and filled all 54 positions on July 1, there's nowhere, we're not going to have anywhere near a $328,000 impact. If it's 106000 for 25%, which is a little bit more than 10, then we can move monies out of we can we can budget for it but we can move monies out of lap salaries during the year to cover that would that not be correct you could use lap salary to fund this but it does take some time to incur lap salary right. so they will not have any money at the start of the fiscal year unless you allocate new funding for this 
there would be no lab salary until these positions are vacant for a while. And Rebecca, am I correct that the 70 positions are funded or not funded? The 70 positions are funded. These are the funded ones, not the ones that we have Frozen. taken away as for the vacancy rate. Just right. wanted to be sure. I, I think there's certainly a way that we could work with the Sheriff's Department to um, monitor the budget closely over the fiscal year. And if we are coming to the end of the fiscal year and it looks like the department will go over budget, um, we can certainly go back to the table and look at that if that is well, be the same thing an option that you're... That come back to us and we can modify the budget. But I just... I, I think this is a great idea. If it, if it fills all the slots at July 1, I would be tickled to death and hope it works. We believe we'll probably get a lot of transfers. That's, that's, kind, of I, I, that's kind of where our hope is, I think. But. We're hoping that that will happen. Well, I hope they're transfers from out of county. Yes. No, no, no. Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. We don't want Burlington folks for Alec out of county up again to, to rob them back. So from other from other detention right. centers mm -hmm. throughout the state. That's what we're hoping. Not that for. we don't want Bur Burlington's folks. I'm sorry. But now we will. <laughs> but they will be. They will be put under a rigorous, to make sure they're the right person. I just I, I just wish somewhere we could find a way, to uh, stop this back and forth between all the different agencies because every time somebody goes up somebody else goes up somebody else goes up it's that's true sir. cycle going so do we want to set aside or add a hundred thousand as seed money for this program i think that would be a good idea you want yes. to go with a hundred thousand so as seed meaning money. additional budget or um, an allocation in the existing sheriff's department budget or track it throughout the year without increasing the total budget. I was thinking that we needed some seed money for the sign-on bonus to start July 1. So okay. if we start with 100000 and then we can use lap salary throughout the year as that occurs. Mr. Lashley had a question, I think. Uh, yeah, actually, I've got several questions now that you started, you started to make me think about this. Uh, when Rebecca said that the 70 positions that you have here are allocated funds, then it goes to your point. These every month, that number of lap salaries will start to get larger right. because it, there's no one there. Correct. So, with that being said, I don't think you're going to need the hundred and six thousand. That's understand. what I said. I don't okay. think you're going to need it because in a month you'll probably have a hundred thousand dollars to do it. But I guess what I'm saying is, is could we go ahead and? Stipulate that we want $106,443 to go in, as you call it, seed money, to go into this program. And Jackie, all you probably have to wait for is 30 days. So probably by the last day of July, you would have the 106000 And it will, it will take that long, sir, to do all the processing and background okay. and things well, of that like that. And we okay. don't even have to put it in the sheet. So, but we want to make sure that everyone's under the impression that the seed money is going to be there for you to do this. Just you probably have to wait to have the lap salary money. Probably so about the end of July. you're just wanting to use the lap salary, so they won't give a sign-on bonus until the end of July. The only problem I have with that is the ideal situation is we fill 54 positions on July 1. Well, that would be fabulous. Unlikely. But then I think we ought to at least stick. <laughs> There's no way that that will happen. I promise you. <laughs> I'd like that possibility Don't to happen, but be cocky. the probability is probably oh, zero. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to shoot low and hope for high. Yeah. I am too. Okay, I'm uh, to but I'm going to try to be realistic here. We've already hired eight this year, and we got how many in the hopper? We have three deputies, and we have four detention officers. So we have seven people already in the hopper, but that takes a month. That takes a, a while to get everything done. And for uncertified uh, new officers, we don't have a BLET program coming online here until September, uh, the end of August. That's true, and none of, none of that will happen into the year. if right. we sponsor somebody. None of that will happen until I take an oath. That's when that starts. So that's okay. that's a long time. I remember Brian Haygood had to tell me what Hopper was. Oh, he kept talking the Hopper. I thought, what is he talking about? But I understand. Not really. So, Miss York, are we, are we okay? I, it, let me just make sure I understand that we are on board with the hiring bonuses. Yeah and an additional 5000 at 12 months of service to be funded through lap salary. Yes. 5000 sign-on and 5000 at 
one year. Okay. So nothing needs to be added up there, it sounds like. Do we need a motion for that, or are we just working with it? Looking for consensus. Okay. Yeah, that'll work for now. I haven't heard anybody say no, so. Oh, okay. I think I, yeah, I have yes. Questions on that. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Carter. I'm glad to see we're thinking along these lines. We considered something similar for DSS social workers a year ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Opted not to go in that direction because I think the board was more focused on salaries, but the yes. cost of that was being prohibited. Um, <clears throat> my concern is that we still have two hard to fill areas that we're not touching with this plan. Those are paramedics and DSS social workers, meaning APS, uh, Health Protective Services, and social workers. Um, I mean, I'm happy to consider something like this for them. I don't know if it's a one-size-fits-all, uh, meaning I don't know if they would prefer something different or not. I, I would like to get some information about that before Monday to see if that's something that we would want to do for these groups, too. Um, what do those vacancy numbers look like? DSS to adult protective services is about 12, and I think uh, paramedics are seven. So seven. if you looked at 80% of both of those, you're looking at 20. And they were part of the salary study, right? DSS? Yes, D detention, DSS, and uh, EMS were part of the first phase of the market study already. Now, didn't we, um, going back, maybe a couple of years, didn't we actually vote on uh, bonuses for DSS? And it, it was it was negligible in, in their hiring? And that was, that was yes. two years ago. Okay. Yeah, yes. that was two years ago, which did mm -hmm. affect our decision about doing that. Right. right. About a year ago. Absolutely. Right. They submitted a request for to someone to bring on additional social mm -hmm. workers that included that. We rejected it, talked about salary. Did you guys look, at, I mean, we can at least talk about Sure. Salary. Did you guys look at the numbers of if we wanted to give a boost to salary, maybe instead of this or or in combination with this for different groups? Uh, about sixteen have positions. What those are? I mean, we start to get higher uh, numbers that, that might make this difficult in light of the the revenues that we've already got established for the budget. Are you asking for the hard to fill positions yes. or are you asking for vacancies? Hard to fill positions. Okay. That if we chose to do, if any of these groups chose to do salary or ask for salary instead of um, assigning them, just have, mm -hmm. just wondering what those numbers are. Okay. So in the past, we've said we weren't fond of sign on bonuses because the research shows that that doesn't actually retain employees. They'll leave after a year and you've lost 10 grand. That's what the typical research has shown. So a lot of places that have started this have moved away from it. It is a good recruitment tool, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they stay. So I think that was the sentiment <coughs> of the board last time is we didn't want to go down this road because there isn't a lot of data to show that this is a long-term solution. In terms of hard to fill positions, we have numbers for what those positions are. I've broken those down for detention, I have paramedics, and then we have social workers. I don't have a good sense of exactly what social worker positions I'm including or not. There's some conversations about which of those should fall in this category. So my numbers aren't totally firm, um, but I did run scenarios on a $3,000 increase and a $2,000 increase based on some loose numbers in those departments. So. We're talking about 140 detention officer positions, approximately 100 part-time and full-time paramedic positions, and my DSS numbers are still a bit in flux, but if I use the number of 35 social workers, um, a $3,000 increase would cost a million dollars, just over a million and a $2,000 increase for each of those positions would cost about 67,400, I'm sorry, $674,190. Is that 2,000 and 3,000 total or is that 2,000 and 3,000 plus benefits? It includes FICA retirement, um, FICA and retirement, yes. 
has to be added in because it's considered an earning. And could you go over the numbers again? You said 140 for... I have 140 for detention. Right. So that's officers, deputy, corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, major. I've got 100 for EMS, paramedic, and part-time paramedic. And then I've got somewhere between... <laughs> I'm not sure where we've landed on social workers as to whether that includes supervisors or does not. So I'm using a number of 35, which would not include supervisors. And I do, <coughs> don't know if that's accurate. Well, I just want to um, just, I'm just, just want, because I couldn't remember the number here. Uh, in your recommended, manager's recommended budget for social services, you actually have an increase. Right. So over last year's. All of our personnel lines have increased for every single department. And that is because we had the market study last year. So that's a change from year to year. We also have you know, different factors in there that, they're, that are causing those increases. Remember, we also had a large retirement uh, increase from the state. That's factored into that number. Uh, and then if we do COLA or merit, that would also cause the personnel lines to okay. increase. So each of those components are reflected in that increase. Well, I was looking at your recommended budget versus the adopted budget of social services, and it looks like it's about $2 million more than the budget that we adopted last year, which you're recommended here. So yes. why couldn't that, the extra increase, you just mentioned what it's about, okay? Yep. Um, they are also a department that has difficulty in hiring recruiting as well yes so once again we're back to um, would Commissioner Turner would, would, would lap salaries catch up with what you're asking probably not paramedics um, well the paramedics maybe, maybe uh, the paramedics I'd like to talk about that as well but I just wanted to sort of book this away before I started with the paramedics but if you want to I will um, didn't we increase the salaries of our EMS staff? Yes. So why are we doing it right after? Once again, why can't they wait a year? And, and what's what's? I'm just trying. I'm just asking. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. But, but so didn't again, just the market study increased salaries for detention, paramedic or EMS and social workers. Already. Already. So we're looking at this again. Additional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Commissioner Turner is wanting to do something above and beyond market for the p positions that continue to be hard to fill. That would put those salaries above market. I see what I was, what I was wanting was to come up with a plan to fill the positions gotcha. that, that currently are hard to fill. And so if it's, if those departments and, and staff thinks we can, we can do that with, with a, a signing bonus, which I understood this board to be to frown upon, then I'm happy to consider that. I just haven't heard. I think it'd be good to hear from them about, about that. And, you know, maybe they I think be another day, but we got to month. Other county departments have been told that that was not something the board wanted to explore. So we have steered away from that. Yeah. yeah. Every year, we this is what we hear. It's every year. This is, I mean, since I've been here on yes. this. And, um, and it's, it's the same issues. Um, what kind of turnover are you seeing, like from year to year? Is, is are social workers kind of hovering around the same amount? They'll hire some, then some will leave. You know, that's we used to see that in certain departments of the school system. It's just what it is. Um, and we've given these three, like um, Bill was saying, they went through the salary study because we're looking at all the departments in the county to make sure that we are competitive with what appears to be with us county to county. Yes. Um, I have some concerns if we are doing these salary studies and paying for these salary studies and then we get to this point and it's not turned out like we would hope if it, if it gets raised or it's the parents are being raised, it's out there being raised and we're adding more to it again. What is the limit for that? I mean, what is it going to take? Because I know other counties are having the same struggles that a lot of folks are running from these kind of positions. It's just so difficult in the lack of respect. And um, so, I mean, paramedics, I'm gonna tell you, 
I can, well, they're all amazing. What can you say? They all have their different thing, but they all are tied to each other too. Um, they all feed into each other. So I'm, I'm just curious about making serious. Yeah. Well, on yeah. Monday, uh, as York pointed out, that we're looking, we're exploring an opportunity or options to contract for transport services for EMS. Am I correct? It's a bit more complicated than that, but we would ask the board at a future meeting to look at the opportunity for convalescent transport to be right. contracted out or to be franchised. And that's going to cost. Everything sure. Costs. Yeah. We would lose revenue on that. Well, we lose. We have to pay off people who can't afford to pay their bill every year. So that would continue. Yeah. That would continue. I do have the vacancy rates. I shared that during the manager's um, budget presentation. And so this was a snapshot in time as of April 30th when I presented it. The detention center um, in fiscal year 22-23 had a 28% vacancy rate, and we saw that drop to a 27%. On EMS, uh, Previous year, 22-23, we're at, we were at a 14%. There's the slide that I used. They're now at a 13%. Sorry, it was there. And then on social services, um, we've actually seen some, some good strides there. They were at 23% vacancy in fiscal year 22-23. And as of April 30th, they were at 17%. That's big for them. The, the problem, so, though, is that the, the social worker piece is still not that I understand. We still think that the market study potentially had some impact on these departments mm -hmm. in addressing the vacancy. Do you specifically have the vacancy rate for the social workers that Commissioner Turner is talking about? Um, I can get that. I don't have that at the moment, but I can get that calculated. You know, there's something we need to remember about this, too. In, the, in, in I think it was 2009, we had done 2008 or 2009, we had done a salary study, and we agreed to fund it. I, none of us on this board were on that board at the time, and then in, I think it was 2008, because then in 2009 we hit a pretty nasty recession, and everybody backed off, concerned about the impact. And that's helped to put us where we are today, because we had a plan that were being implemented that would have retained or would have kept our salaries for our employees at a level consistent with the market. And we got way behind the market. We're trying to get back up to the market now. And if we can get back up to the market, maybe we won't get in this position again where we're trying to find money and we're having to hit our citizens to try and find it. And we, coming in with a flow of normal flow of revenues. <coughs> we just ain't as big as some of these people. Beg your pardon? I said we're just not as big as some of these counties that are around no. us. Um, but we got big issues. I remember my first year before Craig come in after me on ESS that I asked Angela Cole how many social workers would give her a really healthy, safe, could serve, really like she would want to and, and should. She said about 20, 24. And I asked her how many, this was Child Protective Services, I said, how many you got? She said four. Now you think about four yeah. over this county. Wonder how that would turn out if we had four deputies for this county or four paramedics. Or four nurses. I mean, you know, it's um, it's it's just none of this goes away. COVID showed that. Boy, what a mess coming out of that with abuse on children. Um, I don't know. You got to have these jobs because when you call nine one one, no matter how you feel about it, you want them there right then, and they are right there. You got to keep them right there, right? I will try to get a vacancy rate on social workers. I don't have it here. That's okay. Last time we looked, can you remember what the number was? Like, just like an estimate? Because I was thinking... <laughs> I have like, a list here, and I just no worries. need to calculate. No worries. You're, you're, fine. you're fine. Any more thoughts, Mr. Lashley? Uh, you want me to keep going with this, or you want me to go to the school? Um, weren't we on the school before? Yeah. 
Well, I just was mentioned that paramedics, we actually gave them a raise, and we actually gave them actually what they asked for. And then I remember uh, hearing from the, those that group that they wanted to be paid Wake County rates. And I was, I was a little bit taken back by that because we had worked diligently to get them what they asked for, and then they raised the bar. I was not very happy about that, but I'd be willing to listen to them. Um, if you want me to, I only have one last question. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to ask the school system. Uh, I see that uh, Ms. Johnson's not here today, and I'm a bit disappointed because I asked her a question that she said that she would get back to me at this meeting. And the question was, how much did the school system pay for teacher supplements last year and the previous year? Now, I have some numbers, but I've been told by my finance team that they're not hard numbers, that they can't verify the numbers that I have. So that's why I asked her that question. Like, Ms. I, like Mr. Harrison, I'm not into the gotcha game. I don't play that. I'm all about what do we know and how do we know it. So my question is this, and if she wants to email me, that's more than I'll be more than happy to receive the email. But the question was very simple. How much did the, your school system pay for teacher supplements the year before and this this year that right now? Okay. Do you also have a question about supplements for teachers that were funded by the county as opposed to the state? Well, I don't really. Or supplements that were funded. Last year, I got the conference. There you go. Let's check it out. And you got Alamance County here. All right. I could probably save Mr. Harrison a phone call. Uh, and this is an average. Give me one second. Okay, now I could take this number, $5,864, is what Ms. Thompson just gave me. I didn't write this book. Well, that's 23, that's 22, 20 the county, county map book. The conference, yeah. well, at least I'll have it last year's, and I was curious I what, what this year's is. Uh, so I can take, how many teachers do we have in the system? 800, I mean 985? Is that the last number I saw? See, this is just, but anyway, I have the number that I need. It says we're ranked 22nd, uh, 5,864 dollars, and I'm assuming that's an average. So I can probably, extrapolate through this like how many um, well I'm thinking if you had if you had a thousand teachers it would be 5.8 million dollars okay I'm good thank you Miss Thompson I really do appreciate that uh, sure great reading <laughs> if you need to go to sleep. I think you were out. We got a, a, a patch of those in. I got them from the uh, okay. NCACC for us all to have them. We'll get some new ones in August. Uh, Greg, do you know how, like, like just an estimate of how many teachers are in your system? Because I've seen various numbers. I've seen 985. I've seen a 1,000 number. Uh, uh, Mr. Harrison, yep. Commissioner Thompson just gave me this book that has the 22, 23 numbers for teacher supplement. Um, so, how many teachers do you have in your system? It's like an estimate. Is it around a thousand teachers? What's the action? Don't know. Okay, no worries. Or just trying to cover them. Just trying to piece piece something together. And that will, she's going to text that to me right away, and I will ask for that. As okay. Well. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I think that is also just teacher supplements. Mm -hmm. There are other supplements. Uh, that's what, well, see, the, the number that I have is mm, much different than this number. Yeah. Uh, but I think you're right, just just teachers, and that's what this says, and that's just fine. But I know that we pay supplements to assistant principals and principals, principals and they are the ones that get a higher percentage because, and they also have a higher salary. So I know that this number here, if I had to estimate it and I had to guess and you had a gun to my head, I'd probably say that number is about twice as high. Like, it may not come in at $5,864. It may come in, I mean, look, I'm, I'm just taking, I'm just assuming you have a thousand teachers in your system just to make math easy in my head. Uh, but that would be 5.8, but I could see the assistant principals and the principals coming in at 3.2, 3.5. So, uh, we can, we can put these numbers together and it's, it's, it's not all that big. I just had I just had a proposal, a solution to the school system's problem. Which is? 
but I can't say anything until we find out what that teacher supplement number is. Once I find out what that teacher supplement number is, I'll be more than happy to give you my solution to help out your school system. And I do believe that it will. It solves two of your major problems. But I'm good. Commissioner Carter, thank you so much for the time. I really thank do you. appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Turner? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Deep in thought. <laughs> He's probably very tired. <laughs> uh, I've got some, some questions for the school system. I, I want to sort of set the stage for how I've seen you talked at our last couple of meetings about, about where we are on, on specific budget <laughs> items. We, um, we talked about the technology piece coming out of the operations budget, 1.4 million going into a capital reserve fund that's funded by the Davenport plan to either be directed towards facilities, technology, or facilities capital in the future. But uh, So that would take, I think, well, if we're talking about a 10.3 request, that would take 1.4 out and still fund it. The utilities contingency we talked about, perhaps taking that out at 1.2 million dollars. Uh, using Mr. Hook's revised number of 2.5 million on the on the utilities, knowing that we don't have a year's worth of utility costs on our projected rate of utility use, to know exactly what that number would be, but but also being willing to share information as we go during the year with uh, actual utilities numbers, working with that with the county, and, and the idea that if if we were off on that estimate, then you could come back at some point in the year and, and adjust it. Um, the new number for the virtual school, which we talked about yesterday, which I think was about $247,000. Um, we talked about if you don't hire all of the teacher vacancies that you have, then you're going to have some supplement numbers that you don't have to pay out. I estimated that at $50,000 based on not hiring 40 teachers out of the 240 that you could hire, so I'm counting on $50,000 there. Maintenance, which we hadn't talked about, but that was just my number. The maintenance request, Mr. Herbst, $1.4 million. Uh, we talked about reducing the HVAC preventative maintenance number to $345,000. We talked about the fact that if you have that maintenance, preventative maintenance piece for roofs and HVAC, you could cut back on three people that you wouldn't have to pay, and that's difficult to hire anyway, which I a, a number of $180,000, and it would seem reasonable. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. And you also have, you've requested in your maintenance budget for your maintenance contracts more money than last year, but that's not an increase in what you would spend in your maintenance service contracts. It is what you actually spend. You didn't budget for it enough last year, and this is the difference. That includes a $375,000 contingency, which I reduced to $100,000. With all of the, that in mind, with all of those cuts, which I think is comprehensive in my mind, I came up with a $6.8 million number, down from 10.3, which as I look at it, allows you to have, a, basically, this, as I understand it, the same services, the same service rates that you would have last year. Um, so all of that leads to, we have, Double check. Oh, it also adds the $200,000 that you would get that we want to dissipate again. So that comes to 2 6 My question then, I don't know if you're prepared to answer today, um, is if you assume about a 7.0 increase, am I correct that that maintains about your same service level as you have this year? What happens to those service levels if the number is, is not 7 but 3.5? What happens to those service levels if the number is not 3.5, but essentially managers recommended, which is zero? How does that affect what you do? How does that affect kids? How does that affect the year? What do you lose from 7 to 3.5 and zero? Um, and what does that look like for the district? Again, you may not be able to answer that today, but I think that's something that we need to consider, which is not just putting stuff on the sheet, but understanding how that impacts the district. We would simply have to take 
those items that were asked for, if it goes down to 3.5 and, and come in half. Um, that means with the maintenance, with services that we provide, um, and then, then just everything we ask, if it goes down to zero, just take that off the table. Just say that's, that's not going to be happening. Um, Dr. Harrison, could you please come up to the mic? For the without having the line items in, in front of us, it would simply be everything that we were asking for in terms of any type of service agreement, any type of repair work, any type of maintenance work. We just have to cut that out, cut it in half. And that means it, uh, dollars to provide that would run out mid, midway through the year. If we cut that to uh, zero, we would simply just do without uh, those things and would not uh, allow us to even come close to, to catching up. We, you know, as I told you before, and I don't want to, to repeat these things to, to, to bore you, that we work really hard to keep this number as low as we can and get in a position that we can operate next year and not be facing some of the issues we faced the last couple of years, particularly what we faced this year. And it's simply, um, in a sense, we were playing with monopoly money the last three, three years. And the game's been taken away from us. And we, uh, there, there's nowhere that I can find a cut. 90% of our budget is people. Uh, you know the number of people we cut. That's what those 7.5 million, all of that was people, was it not? Craig, did we did we cut any programs? We since you've been here, it's all people. And people's the core of our business. Um, can you offer any greater specificity than that very general response that I gave? Um, yes, I'll try. While he's walking up there, Dr. Harrison. I'm hearing you're cutting positions. I know a lot of those student services, were there people cut their jobs, because I hear there are, or were they positions that weren't filled? Because we all know the importance of these student services. There's most of the student services positions, counselors, social workers, mm -hmm. um, nurses, were position vacancies. Okay. Um, and we handled some of those by combining positions. So what you might have heard is I had one school, next year I have two schools. Yeah. Um, we, the, the only financial impact on any employed people were months of employment. We had some school high school counselors, we had one 12 month counselor at each school. Um, we pushed that back to 10.5. We provided some money because there is work that needs to get done at the high school in the summer, but rather than making that a 12-month employee, we can do it more efficiently by <coughs> paying for, for services. Um, the school instructional support positions, they all went back to classroom teachers. They were 10 and a half uh, months, so they're now 10 months. There's salary monthly salary, daily salary is, is the same. So someone may have said, I've lost my SIS job. Yes, they did, but they didn't lose their job. Their, their, their contract is a teacher. Their contract is being honored except the, the, the months of employment. Graduation coaches, same thing. Uh, no more graduation coaches, but they're back in the, uh, in, in the classroom. But, so, that so I don't think we sent, we, we cut seven half-time um, guidance secretaries at our middle schools. Um, we didn't have any other half-time positions or enough half-time positions. A couple of those people took full-time positions. A couple of those people didn't want to work full-time, so they went home. I mean, we, I know we had one retiree, um, and then she had no interest in working full-time, so, so she went home. So they could say they lost their jobs. But, uh, so the graduation coaches that have just switched what they're going to be doing as far as in classroom. 
that service, who takes that on with pulling these kids across, doing that extra? I mean, who's going to take that job on? Is that going to fall on the teacher, the say the math teacher, the social studies teacher? Is that a guidance counselor role, social worker role? Yeah, yeah I, you know, we 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 all have responsibility for all the kids we serve. I know. And we, um, you, know, you guys are making decisions based on the resources you have. We'll make decisions based on the resources we have. Um, we're working now um, on putting in a system of support. How, how do we make a, and and those SIS, the school and structural support positions, uh, they did different things at each of their schools. We didn't. We had kind of a general uh, responsibilities for them, but different principals used in different ways. We have support that we have to provide for exceptional children. We have what we call multi-tier system of support. Um, we always say that's the Fayetteville National Anthem. Um, <laughs> the, um, I, I should not do that when I'm talking yeah. because I lose my train of thought. Um, multi-system, multi-tiered system of support that when a student is struggling, everybody gets tier one. That's in a regular classroom. Tier two is a little extra help. Tier three is a little more directed help. So the SISs have been providing that type of support in some schools. Other schools, they had other people doing it. So it, it's simply a matter of us collectively figuring out how we can provide those um, levels of support. You know, I think I, I may have told the board that when we started this process and, and, and we started cutting, um, in my mind, those SISs were uh, untouchable. Yeah. So they were a secret, sacred cow. We're, we're not going to take those away. And we didn't take them away until, I think, the, the last day. One of every role of every whatever works in the school system has a profound effect on a child. And I don't want nothing to take away from a child. I have a question, I think, uh, Greg Dr. Harrison. Could you get us a number for how many of the positions you cut were funded from COVID money sources, ESSER, or whatever? How, you know, when we when we came into that role where we were getting all this federal do those federal dollars, and one of the things this board at the time said was, please be cognizant of the fact that if you use those funds to hire positions that you'd like to have, we may not be able to come in and sustain that after it all goes away, because it is going to go away, and it did, it has, or it will. We. Um when I when I made the reference to monopoly money, well, that's pretty uh, much what it was, wasn't it? Well, um, twenty one twenty two, we filled our holes with fund balance, three point five million dollars of fund balance. When you do that, you either yep. find additional revenue for twenty two twenty three, or you make three point five million dollars worth of cuts for twenty two twenty three. We didn't either, so. Again, three and a half million dollar hole, covered it with fund balance. Going into 23, 24 this year, we have no fund balance, but we have extra money. And I think maybe in my presentation, I can't remember, I know I shared with the board that we did make some cuts back in May of last year coming into this year. But as we really looked into that, those cuts were positions that were being funded with ESSER money, right? So that didn't really help our fiscal situation with the county and with the state. When we cut those positions, many of those were positions that would fall into the category that ESSER refers to as learning loss positions. Mm -hmm. You have to fund 20% of your available learning loss, or excuse me, 20% of your available ESSER funds for learning loss to free up the other money. Okay, when we cut those positions, we didn't save any county or state money, but we also didn't meet our 20% threshold. Okay, so mid-March, late March, we realized we didn't make the 20% uh, threshold. We had 
couple million dollars sitting in extra money that we couldn't access because of that. So we went about taking positions that we had, some local positions, some state positions, that would fall in the category of learning loss and shifted them to ESSER. Met our learning loss requirement, freed up this other money, and we used that ESSER money to fill the <laughs> hole that fund balance filled in 22-23 and 21-22. That gets us to here. And building our budget going into next year, to cover all that that I just talked about, we cut $7.5 million the, the two years. And um, so that's what makes it difficult, Mr. Carter, to say that these positions were funded out of ESSER money, because I don't think that we took any, any of the ESSER money and said, we have extra money, let's go ahead and employ an, a graduation coach. Let's go and employ an SIS coach. I think most of what went to ESSER were positions that were already in existence and we moved them over there. So like our, our, our SIS assistants, I've, I've been using those. We're paying some of those out of state, we're paying some of those out of local, and we're paying some of those out of, out of ESSER. The, Anybody who falls in the teacher category, we get actual salary from the, from, the, from the state. From you guys, we get a dollar amount, and, and we, so if we hire a locally paid teacher, it's, it's money that's with you. So we take all the locally paid pe people, and, and I don't think we were doing this, we've done it the last couple months, and shift them to state money. So if, if we've got a $70,000 teacher and we have a $40,000 teacher, we need to make sure we put the $70,000 teacher on the state salary schedule because I'll get $70,000 for them. And we put the $40,000 on the local budget because we get we take that out of the pool that you provided us. If we do it vice versa, you know, it, it's almost, it, it almost gives us a, a, well, it does give us, if we're using that 70-40, it gives us a, an additional teacher every three teachers. And, and so that's why that's a really, Difficult question to, to respond to. I, I, again, I think we've, um, you know, with with this budget that we presented, with those cuts, with the re requests that we we we've, we've made, that will get us back to. We're not going to need fund balance at the end of next year, in the middle of next year. We're not going to need ESSER, and and a lot of school districts are in this shape, um, be, because of ESSER, and. When you when you're a um, when you're an organization that that is 90 percent people, and you get a pot of money as big as the extra money is, it's real hard not to go into people. Now, what you need to do is need to make sure that those people know, and that that and and we know, and and however we use those people, that it's going to be gone in two years. And, and we knew it was going to be gone in September of 24. Mm -hmm. Well, I think over the last 12 months, I, think, I don't think there's anybody on this board that doesn't support education. And, and I mean, you've got three, three members of this board whose wives are either retired educators or whose wife is currently in education. We all support education. I think the biggest problem we've had this past year and the problem that ABSS has, and it's not your fault, is a public image problem. Um, it's really difficult for us to sit here with people telling us don't give them any more money and y'all come and ask for 10, over $10 million more and march a bunch of people in here that say give them everything they ask for what we hear on the street, different. So it, it, it's a tough act. And uh, one of the things that makes it tough as well is when we get a budget where you've got a 10% plug and a 20% plug, and, and it's taking you to a bigger number than, you know, 
zero-based budgeting is what the county tries to use. We take every line item and look at it and try to justify using it again. Am I correct? And, and in business, in banking, when I did my budgets, that's the same way we looked at it. If I was going to look at incentives for the, my employees, it's whatever the line item might be, how much did we spend last year, what do we think we're going to spend this year? And uh, there weren't a lot of fudge factors. Um, nobody wanted to give me more than I thought I was going to spend. And in business, you don't get more than you think you're going to spend. And then you're lucky if you get more in revenue than you've got the last year that okay. will support more profits. But we're taking, having to take a hard look Understand. at this budget, as you can understand from the comments that have been made here today. Um, it's not a free-for-all. The money's coming out of the pockets of our citizens. And uh, if we go, and we're already looking at about, at, a, at the manager's recommended budget for two cents, am I correct? The two cent increase. Yeah. Two cent increase in the property tax. Um, if you take $10 million, you're looking at another four cents. So, this is a tough call. This is really tough to look at. We've got to get a right number. Our part of our part of our responsibility is to pay for the bills of the county. We've got to make sure that there's enough money out there to pay for utilities, water, gas, gas for buses, gas for law enforcement, uh, whatever the need is. We've got to be able to pay it. Um, but we can't pay more than we need. Because every time we put more money in here than we need, we're taking money out of our citizens' pockets. I, I don't believe we're putting more money than we, we need in here. I mean, we put a couple of contingencies, and, and those are areas where we've, we've got over. We um, are, are we, we've tried to build in some line items for costs that we've had in the past that we didn't budget for so that's part of it right and that's probably part of what we use the fund balance on mr. Carter um, you know, we're at a point that and, and I've been involved in zero based budgeting before um, didn't have time to zero based budget from March to June 14th um, and, and plus we we're in a in a crisis situation it's it's not the same as it is in business though I understand the, princ the principle applies and the principle is the same but there are so many things that are dictated for us and again with the funds coming from a variety of sources um, I would um, can't speak for the board but I think we would be willing to sit down after this budget process and talk about working together on a, on a zero based budget I think we would also be interested in talking about coming up with some type of funding formula that we could work together that would be fair to the school system and fair to the county commissioners. We did that, and, and again, so much a crime for a superintendent to stand up and talk about what he did somewhere else. <laughs> but we had a real tough year one year in Cumberland, and we were on the verge of, of a lawsuit. and and. and uh, County manager and I talked to the county finance officer and our finance officer and said, let's the four of us meet. And we came up with a figure that we thought we could live with and said we would get together and create a formula. And so the next year, we, we got through that budget process. We created the formula. Um, I was there for two years with that formula. I left. It was a four-year four agreement. Two years after I left, and they, they re-upped on it. So we had a formula in that school system that was used for eight years and this never happened that my last two years there I didn't stand in front of you guys other than say thank you and so what I'm asking you to do is, is take a leap of faith <coughs> in, this, in, in this team our team uh, that we have in place right now is as solid a team as, as I've worked with this guy, uh, you, I've watched him present to you. I've watched him answer every question that you have. Um, he knows what he's doing. 
I worked with him for four years as a principal. His integrity is beyond reproach. Um, Ravonda knows curriculum inside and out. Yeah. I've got the numbers and I'll get to you in a minute. She's our chief <laughs> academic officer, but she's also serving as our chief finance officer right now. So in addition to get, getting that information, and she was in the middle of thing today working with the guy who was with us. She said, let me run downstairs and I'll get that to you. Um, she's great and, 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 and doing good work. Our, our student support services, Dr. Davis, I hired her when I was here before as an exceptional children's director. She went to um, High Point University to teach, came back in this position. She's as good as they come. Yolanda Anderson, I hired her as a principal when I was here before. She went off, worked in another school system. She's back doing our human resources. And um, we've got a, uh, a communications person now that has worked with many of you folks has made connections with the uh, community. Uh, we're hiring a new one that, um, that, that knows this community, has been involved in this community, and will be willing to work with you. And, and I've changed the name of that position from PIO to communications officer, because it needs to be about more than us getting information out. Mm -hmm. It needs to be more about us communicating. And, you know, we, um, this board was pretty clear to me about what they expected me and wanted me to do and hoped I could do in, in six months. And I think we've made some strides in some of those areas. We're still working as hard as we can work. And I think I owe it to, uh, to them, to you, to my colleagues, and to the kids to get us on solid ground when that new superintendent comes in. And this is what it's gonna take. What I'm asking for is what it's gonna to take to get us there. And, and, and we set a target that we did not wanna ask you for any more than that target. That target was a whole lot less than $10 million. And every time it bumped up, what more can we do? What more can we do? I think the fact that we worked together over the last two weeks and you guys asked us some questions. You guys came up with some solutions. I mean, I, I was talking with our, our fin finance, former finance officer, because he's working with us today, and, and he couldn't understand why that technology stuff was not in Capitol all along. And, and I didn't remember, but that's where it was in Cumberland. That's where it is in other places. So, you know, you guys brought, brought that to our attention. I should have caught it. Greg was new to the position. He wouldn't have thought about it. That's, all, that's the way it's been. But, but that's also illustrative of the fact that when we talk together and not at one another, we talk with one another, mm -hmm. we want the same thing. I'm not a taxpayer now. I was for four years in, in Alamance. I don't, I don't like writing that check every year. And, and so I want to keep that down as well. But I'm willing to write that, and I can't speak for anybody else and their money. I'm willing to write that check. I'm not happy, but it doesn't hurt me when I know what it's going for. And, you know, public education is a, um, I think it drives economic development. Wide houses cost a lot more in Chapel Hill than Orange County. Parents want their kids to go to Chapel Hill Carborough schools. And I was superintendent in Orange County. I'll tell you that Orange County schools are just as good as Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what we met, how we measure schools are, uh, are ways that, do, that don't really indicate or reflect what they, they truly are. So, you know, I think we want, we want this economy to continue to grow. I think that... Um, we, we talked a little bit about choice when I was here last time. I, I'm a believer in choice. I believe the best choice is the traditional public schools. But we need to be able to demonstrate to our parents that we are the choice. Um, you know, I, I look at a couple of programs we had, a couple of programs we've cut. I, I guarantee you, without dual language, we'd, we'd be losing more students. Yeah. Um, 
And so we need to continue to work to find ways to convince parents that we are the place for their kids. And again, I think we do that through us working together, and I think we do that with a communications person rather than a public information person. We get the information out. Um, you don't want a speech or any preaching, but that's what you get when you ask me. You learn that in superintendent school. You give them a long answer, they won't ask you any more questions. <laughs> I think Mr. Cook was going to answer. He was. What, did I, so we never. So I did all that without getting to the question. Well, as to, as to your comment about your as to your comment about education in the community, I was just in a meeting over in Gilbert County this morning, where the uh, head of the airport authority for uh, PTI made a presentation to us, and one of their top one of their top plus factors in recruiting new industry into Gilbert County, the same issue, education and quality of education. So those failing schools have got to be brought up. We've got to do that. I don't think that was me. So we have um, your staff's number on the supplements. If we want to pivot to that, was there something else we needed, Mr. Advancer? Are we ready to move on? Well, it was the. Uh, the what do you specifically? If you assume seven million, if you assume three point five, if you assume zero. Okay. Give a specific answer on that. I, I'm not. I'm not certain what what those numbers mean this the seven million I, I wanted to to speak about some of the numbers I presented and I think it probably would clarify and get to possibly the answer the the prior slide that you had up uh, that shows the kind of the line items that you, you all have discussed already the things I I spoke about here uh, in the last meeting uh, I spoke about utilities technology and maintenance uh, utilities uh, I had a number and I had built in a contingency number, but that's on the board, and I think that's adequate because we discussed how to come back and get more. So that's utilities. Uh, technology I presented, and I presented a number of 1.4, and I had a breakdown, mm -hmm. uh, and you all have said there's a, a, a means to fund that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not on the board. I don't know if it needs to be on this board or if that means that you describe uh, Mr. Turner keeps it off this board uh, to fund the technology. Um, uh, in the capital plan uh, and then the third item that I had was maintenance 1.4 700 of that uh, 700,000 of that 1.4 was for preventative maintenance um, and we've discussed in, in in the prior meeting and a little here today how the 700 uh, could be reduced to four 495 and I think that's acceptable because I, I just said that's going we're going from zero to 495,000 for preventive maintenance and I, I think that's acceptable so of the 1.4 million that I described for technology um, in in the prior meeting um, the other 700,000 was straight from the maintenance budget which included the service contracts which you've spoken about um, so um, I mentioned in that meeting that uh, in prior years the school system has funded 1.8 million for service <coughs> contracts and it just wasn't a, a realistic number uh, and in that process I described uh, other items in that that uh, uh, that sheet that we, that we had on the board, for instance, <coughs> maintenance materials, uh, the, the, the dollar value was up in the next year. Gasoline for our vehicles was up in the next year. Um, there was one line item for uh, uh, equipment rentals that wasn't even funded. Uh, so, but you asked me what, what, would, what are we getting? And I said, in the end, nothing, it's all inflationary. So, the, there only, there's only 700,000 left that I think is not on the board or in, in discussion, and that is the maintenance items that includes the service contracts. Um, you mentioned uh, uh, reducing the 375,000 down to 100,000 for contingency in the service contracts. So that's, is that 275? Is that, that's, that's how much the reduction is? Uh, this job but, but, but in theory, in theory, yes. Um, and then if you, uh, um, uh, are implying that we reduce the uh, the HVAC um, positions that are not filled and take them off the board at 100, 180. Uh, from that 700,000, taking out the 375 and the 180, that just leaves 245 that we're that I'm asking that I would be asking for if we were to go along with those those ideas, which I think are fine. Um, but at that same time, I gave the example of the uh, inflation in 21 year over year was 4.7, 22 was 8 percent. And in 23 is 4.1, and if you took a basket of goods that you bought in 
2020, and then you tried to purchase it again um, at the end of 23 or at the beginning of 24, it would be $17 more. We have $100,000, $100 baskets in the maintenance budget. Maintenance budget's a little over $10 million. That's $100,000, $100 baskets. So in theory, if we just went with inflation on that budget, uh, that's up $1.7 million that I'm not asking for. I've asked, I just text Ms. Johnson back for clarification. We have um, 1692 FTE full-time equivalent teachers. Um, Say that again, 1692? Full-time equivalent, yes. Some of those are part-time part combined. And I think the other figures that were in our um, I think this is what you're getting at with the with the question about the supplements was 1.4 that million was from for the supplements it was state mandated legislature we didn't that three percent and I guess there's, you look for clarification of how do we come up with that figure based on that three percent that the general assembly is requiring us to do and then the other piece that I always like to point out um, with regards to the piece in there that goes to charter schools, it's a total of about 1.6 that it's really just passed through money to us, even though it shows as part of that, that budget. I think that's, um, and Ms. York has put up the, um, the supplement, uh, Ms. Johnson emailed it to, to her as well as me. Glad it came through. Yeah, me too. And that's, uh, that's on the screen. Well, you want to tell me what it is because I can't yeah. see anything. Yeah, I also emailed it to you if you have your email pulled up. I do. Okay. Thank you. It shouldn't take uh, everything. So it looks like the oh, teacher supplement for right. 2324 is 11.5 million. Yeah. And then there's a building admin supplement. Yeah. So uh, that's exactly, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not a rocket scientist and I don't know a whole lot about math, but. I know that I, my number was eleven million dollars, and I was and I was I was guessing I was just taking things and extrapolating. Yeah. I guess Dr. Harrison, the only thing so eleven point let's 11 round point. It, make math easy eleven point six million. Well, uh, I just want to go back to the figure you just gave me. Uh, you get full time teachers sixteen ninety two, but that that does not include your principals or your assistant principals. No. Correct. Can we make an estimate on how many principals and assistant principals we have? I know we have 38 principals. Yep. Um, we have two principals in our high schools, that's 14. We have one assistant principal in our middle school, that's 21 total. We have all of our elementary schools have an assistant principal, with the exception of four of them that share two. How many elementary schools do we have, Greg? Yeah. Uh, we have 20 elementaries. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have so that, 18. So that would be 18. 18 so whatever those first two numbers I had plus 18. Gotcha. Um, then we have essential services administrator supplements, and, and they would primarily be um, our, our specialists, I believe, that are paid on a teacher, teacher salary schedule. Seventeen hundred and seventy-eight. Seven. Yeah. Seventeen hundred and seventy. Staking outside the box, Thomas. And that's how you solve problems. That's what I'm counting on. And that's how you fix things. You know, there's an old saying: you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expect a different result. <laughs> Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking like this, and that's why I'm looking at this cash. But because I think it will solve his problem. It's not going to be not going to be uh, people are not going to jump out in the streets and shake my hand and thank you so much for doing this because it's a it's a hard decision, and it's certainly not something that you hear from most people that are in county government. 
but I'll serve it up there since Thomas is so, so enamored with it all. He's not part of my presentation. He's not. Mm -hmm. Try to stay away from him if you can. Mm -hmm. This is my idea, and I'm looking at an $11.6 million number, and if you get your 1.4, that will be $13 million if you were to get the 1.4. Correct? If you were to get 1.4 of 11.6, you're going to have $13 million. You just told us that you have a, a hole in your budget, a hole in your system of roughly seven, well, it's, it's, it's a moving number between 6.8 and 7.5. Well, here it is. I suggest that you take the left, we're going to stay away from the 13 number. I'm just saying, if you were to get 1.4, your teacher supplement would be 13 million. But we're going to we're going to add, we're going to look at the 11.6 number. If you were to take the number that you're in the hole, sir, and subtract it from that teacher supplement, that gets the school system on solid ground. It gets you back to zero where you ask where, where you'd like to be. It would get you back there. So let's just say that your number is seven million dollars to get you back to where you need to be. You could take 11, that 11.6, you could take $7 million at and get the school system on solid footing and then give the balance to the teachers as a teacher supplement this year. Now, I know that's not going to be something that everyone's willing to go and do, but it would answer your question, and it would also do another thing. It would also make people who are a part of this, the, the school system, the teachers that come up in front of us always asking for money, they would realize one thing they would realize that there are repercussions to the school board's votes. That when they start doing things, that the teachers don't think there's any downside to them. But this would show them, yes, there is a downside. When the school board gives $19 million away in, in, in salaries, that, you know something, we better hold on a second because that may actually impact us. So that's my big idea. If you take that money that you need out of the teacher supplement, give them the balance, not like they're not going to get anything, but I think it would show the teachers that when the school board makes decisions, that that could adversely affect me. And maybe they would pay attention. And you wouldn't have so many Kool-Aid drinkers coming in front of me always asking for more money. Because we know what happened with $19 million, sir, and any, no one in this room can tell me that if that decision was not made on that day, you would not have the situation in your school system that you have today. That's $19 million, and it seems like it always keeps coming up. So that's my big idea. I know it's not popular, but it will solve your problem, sir. You don't have to respond. <laughs> <clears throat> We've hurt teachers enough this year. Amen. I've hurt teachers enough this year. I think... We just heard from the, the sheriff's department and the challenges that they have with personnel. Uh, we share the same. Um, we talked last time I was here about the number of vacancies that we have. Uh, people can, can make some choices. Um, I think when I talked with you last week, Mr. Lashley, I told you my gripe is with the state more so than with the county commissioners. I can see that. I don't think the state is um, is doing what they're constitutionally obligated to do. I think I told you I was superintendent of the Hope County when that Leandro lawsuit was filed and the Supreme Court ruled on that and the General Assembly is ignoring it and appealing it. And um, so, you know, there are just so many areas where over the last 30 years since I became a superintendent that I've seen the state cut. When I first became a superintendent in 1991, the state paid for utilities. Scratched $2.5 million off right there. But they quit doing that. State used to pay for custodians, clerical per personnel, um, a couple other areas. They stopped doing that. And, and this is not a partisan issue. Because this has happened over the 25, 30 years when we've had all different kinds of people in the General Assembly. So don't think I'm sitting up here bashing the people of the last 10 years. I'm sitting up here saying for the last 20 years, we've been heading down um, 
a path that I've not felt really comfortable with. We've had a couple starts and stops. Um, and, you know, there's a reason that we can't get people to go into to teaching. And we can talk about technology all day long. We can talk about facilities all day long. We can... <clears throat> And that's not what makes the difference. It's the teacher that makes the difference in the classroom every day. And we can get by with an old guy standing up here trying to pretend to be a superintendent, but we can't get by with weak people teaching our kids. <clears throat> and so at the end of the day, it comes down to competent, caring teachers, and everything that we do is to support them. And, and I've spent my career trying to honor, respect, and value teachers and let them know that. Um, I don't think anyone has had any Kool-Aid to drink when they come up here advocating for the budget. I regret that at the one meeting when everybody was up here kind of getting on you guys when you hadn't gotten on budget yet and, and, and their gripes were with me and what I presented. So I apologize that you guys got hit for something that, that Bill did. Bill made all those cuts. And, um, you know, I, I've not said a word, asked anybody to, to come out here. Um, I've had some folks ask me what they could do, and do you want us to get a group of people together? I said, no. That'll cause more animosity. I said, if you want to do something individually, talk with those that you know and talk about what that's about. So I think... You know, I, I sit <clears throat> next to our chairman at our board meetings and hear people say stuff that's unfair and is, is not true, and it, it, it hurts my feelings. I get a little bit angry, so they don't know the facts. Um, but that's part of public service, and, you know, it's, it's kind of what we signed up for in a way. I mean, I don't think we know. I don't think we realized what it was going to be when we signed up. But, you know, and, and so I am, um, my, my job is to, to protect and, and support teachers. And, and, and I'm, I'm not going to stand up here ever and say that I would be at all okay with, with doing what you recommend. And I respectfully listen. I respect respect your efforts to solve my problem, my issue, but that's not going to be a solution that, that Bill's going to have anything to do with, that this Bill's going to have anything to do with. I understand. It's not going to be popular. Because, sir, there's certain things you don't, you don't hear in the school system. I know. But I do. Yep. And people are outraged at our school scores. Outraged. And they said, what company would allow this to happen and you give them more money? You, over and over and over again, they get the benefit of the doubt when the school scores continue to go down. That's all they're saying. Yeah. Then they look at it in their real job, that if they did that in their real job, one or two things would happen to them. They certainly wouldn't get a bonus, but they'd probably get fired. That's what people in the regular world are looking at your system, looking at the scores, and looking at the money that goes to it each and every year. That's all they're saying. Yeah. And, and it's a logical <clears throat> response. It, it, it it's is. It's a logical response because there is a real world out there that works in a different manner than central office does. That's all I'm saying. I'm just thinking outside the box. I'm just telling you I'm, th I'm trying to solve your problem using real world glasses. Yeah. And I know that it's not going to be popular. At, and at your, with your organization. Yeah, and, I, and I you know, say. over the years, I've heard that argument used both ways. Mm -hmm. And and again, I I'm a data person. I'm results oriented. I think if you go track the systems in which I've worked over the years, student outcomes were better when I left than they were when I when I got there. And that year we adopted the, um, the, the budget formula 
after our, our battle, we actually went to mediation. That's how far down the line we were. And in mediation, one of the commissioners brought out some data that he compared Cumberland County with, other, I think it was Forsyth County, or some other counties, similar counties, and said, you know, in the area of health, area of social services, this area, this area, we're not doing as well as those other counties. We're doing better in education than those counties, so we don't need to fund you as much. So his notion was we were doing well, we didn't need to, to, to fund. And, and I understand the accountability for the funding we get. Dr. Harrison, yep. I need to interrupt. Absolutely. I've just learned that uh, Commissioner Turner is going to need to leave, and we need to make some decisions before he has to leave. Um, we're not going to we're not going to be wrapped up today. Um, Chair Paisley feels like he'll be available Friday with his with his bug he has. Um, we need to look at what we can do on the next meeting, and I need uh, Commissioner Turner's input on that. Um, I think we're going to have to have another meeting between now and Monday night. The two options look like possibly Friday at 2 o'clock or Monday at 2 o'clock. And I'm just curious to see if either one of those two works well with either of, with the rest of you. I can do Friday at 2. Wait, what? I can do Friday. Friday at 2? Monday. Monday we have a meeting Monday night. Right, we have a meeting Monday night. Yeah, we've got a meeting Monday night, so we would do a 2 o'clock meeting, break at 4 o'clock, get dinner, and come back for 5, 5 6 30. I'm not going to be available Monday afternoon. Okay, Mr. But y'all can, can have a meeting. Y'all don't need me here. Friday 2 or Monday 2? Or does either one of those work for you? Monday 2 will work for me, but if I have to change Friday of what I'm supposed to go do, I can. Okay. Are you ready to vote on the budget? I'm not. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah, I don't feel like we're there yet. So. Friday. I would prefer Friday at 2. Friday at 2. Okay. We do another time Friday if that would help anybody. Beg your pardon? Would another time on Friday help? Let's I try 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle that. Sometimes I'm up at 2 a.m. I have meals on <laughs> meals. I got to look at my hair. Sometimes I'm up at 2 a.m., right? <laughs> so I got 10 to 12 meals on meals. So. Beg your pardon? Uh, Mills and Wills Friday yes. at 10, probably till 12. I don't know how much I talked to everybody that I take to their stuff. So, um, we all know that will take a few yeah, minutes, right, Pam? Yeah. So anytime after 12, like 1 o'clock on Friday or anything on Monday. Okay, so Friday. the consensus seems to be afternoon on Friday. Okay, what time? 2 o'clock. Okay. Hopefully we can wrap this stuff up in two hours on Friday afternoon. So we would just continue this meeting today. We would not adjourn. Beg your pardon? Right. Correct. Yes. So we would just need you to continue this meeting and not adjourn because right. we haven't noticed. Recess this meeting until Friday at 2 o'clock. You got it. Do we want to give Dr. Harrison a few minutes to finish his comments? Mr. Turner, I know you've got to take off. I have to leave. Okay. But I will watch the uh, video of Dr. Harrison Mix. Okay. Time. I'll just say one last thing before you go. That's the nicest I've ever been told to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 when I went to Hope County, we were one of the five lowest achieving school systems in the state. They gave us $150,000 for two years. We used that $150,000, and after two years, we were out of that category. They took the money away from us. I left after three and a half years, but in four years, we were back where we were because we used those resources well. I'm just saying that Just step forward. We're going to use your money well. Well, we 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 I think we've come up with some solutions today to a couple of issues we've been dealing with. We're looking at some possible other solutions for other departments. I think if we work together, we can come up with a solution. It's just a matter of getting our heads together and figuring out what it what it, what works. You know where to find it. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Uh, before you leave, Rebecca. I know that he's got to go, but I'm just going to uh, ask you, I want to talk to you afterwards about this sheet right here. Absolutely. And then, Commissioner Turner, would you like us to document the $6.8 million addition that you referenced earlier in the meeting? What do you mean document? Uh, add it to the list. I think it's just in our minds. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Ron. <laughs> 
Okay. We are not adjourned. We are recessed until two. Uh, before you says if if they don't if it's just in their minds, can I request that it put on the paper, just to see what it would do. The sixth, what you're talking sure. about. Sure. So, and that's just that's all in pencil. Yep. <laughs> we are recessed until 2 p.m. Friday afternoon, June the 14th. Is that correct? Yeah, Flag right. day. Thank you, everyone. Flag day. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.